work in an office, meeting the public, whether it's in person or by telephone, is an important part of your job. It can be pleasant like this. It can be like this. What's the matter? You sick? No, it isn't that. I've decided to quit my job. Oh, what happened? Is it your boss? Oh, no. You know I like him. Well, then, the company. No, the company's all right. It, it isn't that. It's, it's the people that come into the office. They're so rude and inconsiderate. It's just more that I can take day in and day out. Why, meeting people is the thing I like most about my job. I think it's fun having new people come into the office all the time. Well, I... Oh, the water's boiling. It was as simple as that. For Ruth, meeting the public was pleasant because she enjoyed people and greeted them with a smile. For Barbara, meeting the public was tiresome and unpleasant because her attitude was cold and uncooperative, sometimes even antagonistic. You know, when I first started, I felt like you do, Barb. But I found out how wrong I was. What do you mean? I found out it wasn't really the other people I was seeing. It was a reflection of myself. I was cross with them. They were cross with me. Oh, it's not as simple as all that. You'd be surprised. I found out that if you're nice to people, they're usually nice to you, too. Well, the people in my office are different, and I'm simply not going to stand for it any longer. You're tired now, Barb. I know just how you feel. Let's talk about it again later on. It's no use, Ruth. Really, I've made up my mind. I'm going to start looking for a job tomorrow. I'll cut the table. Oh, here, I'll do it. Everything else is ready. Why don't you go in and sit down and rest for a few minutes? Oh, thanks. I think I will, if you really don't mind. What you need is some good hot food in you. It'll make you feel better. Oh, it's not that, Ruth. I know I'm tired, but it's more than that. A reflection of myself? I don't see how it could be. After all, what do they expect? I've got my work to do. I can't stop and pass the time of day with every person who wants to strike up a conversation. It isn't my attitude that's wrong. It's the people who come into that office. I'm going to look for another job. Franklin's a busy man. You can't expect to walk right in on him and get a job. I bet that secretary's forgotten we're here. Hey, look at all the other people waiting. You see that man? He's one of Mr. Thompson's biggest customers. I have an appointment with Mr. Franklin. Dressed like that? Yeah. Do you? Well, I doubt if he'll be able to see you at all. I see. She's brushing him off as though he were a nobody. I guess his shabby clothes have a fool. I wish she'd answer that telephone. It makes me nervous to have it ring. Well, come to think of it, I let it ring often enough myself. Hello. Yes. Who? Yes, this is Mr. Franklin's office. No, he's busy. No. No. 
I don't know who's in charge of that. Oh, yes, I suppose so. Oh, if you want to. State 4059. Oh, 95. Well, which is it? 59 or 95? Oh, all right. Yes? May I see Mr. Franklin, please? What did you want to see him about? I'd like to discuss that with him, if I may. Is it about a job? No, I represent the Bragdon Company. You selling insurance? We're one of your company's suppliers. Well, I'll see if he'll see you. She should really find out what his business is, but not like that. She should do it tactfully. Well, I guess those questions were kind of blunt. Who do you think she'd know who the Bragdon Company is? Mr. Franklin isn't in. He isn't? I said he isn't in. Thank you. He isn't in? Well, then why has she got me sitting here waiting then? I don't think she told that man the truth. Well, I'm going to find out whether she told the truth or not. Right, Miss Miller. Young lady, Miss, Miss. <gasps> to wake you, Barb. Dinner's ready. Oh, that's all right. I was having a nightmare anyway. A nightmare? I hope it wasn't too gruesome. Help me? Yeah. Ruth, you know what you said before about seeing the reflection of ourselves? Yes. Well, I think I'm going to try it. That's fine, Barb. I know you'll find that if you're nice to people, they're usually nice to you, too. Now, how about some dinner? Gee, I didn't realize I was so hungry. In the days that followed, Barbara did her best to acquire a genuine interest in people. For she found that smiles are effective only when they're genuine. She carefully practiced the first basic rule in meeting the public, remembering and using names. Oh, yes, Mr. Borden. I'm sure that Mr. Thompson will be glad to see you. Of course, Mr. Farnsworth. I'm sorry, Mr. Pratt. She formed the habit of tactfully getting the name and business of every visitor and of introducing him in a pleasant, gracious manner. Mr. Thompson, this is Mr. Markham of Allied Manufacturing Company. She learned to anticipate Mr. Thompson's needs and have ready for him material he might require during an interview. When it became necessary to interrupt an interview with information from Mr. Thompson, Barbara wrote out the message. It wasn't all easy. She made some mistakes, of course. She learned, too, that it's a mistake to argue with visitors. You have an appointment at 10.30. Mr. Thompson should be with you in just a few months. Would you mind waiting over there? As different kinds of situations came up, Barbara discovered the proper way to handle them. One of these was the inquisitive caller. Oh, I suppose you girls managed to keep busy. Yes, there's always enough work to do. There's a rumor that the firm closed a big deal with Marshall and Company. Is that so? Yes, a five-year contract. Know anything about it? I can't say that I do. However, if you'd like to see Mr. Walker, that's all. No, no, all. it's perfectly all right. It's not that important. Yes, Barbara learned to be on guard against the visitor who asks too many questions. To handle him tactfully, but firmly. She learned how to turn away a visitor firmly without making an enemy of him. Can I make an appointment now for some time? Next week? Anytime. I'm free anytime. Well, perhaps I can phone you when an appointment would be more convenient. I have your number. Well, all right. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. She learned good telephone manners, like answering promptly, using the caller's name. 
Mr. Thompson's office? Yes, certainly, Mr. Hunt. And getting the message right. She got into the habit of keeping a waiting visitor informed so that he'd know he wasn't forgotten. Mr. Thompson will see you very soon, Mr. Greenleaf. Oh, thank you. And, of course, she became more conscious than ever of the importance of neat, simple clothing in the office. Above all, what Barbara acquired in the days that followed was a real understanding and liking of people. She found that smiles are contagious, that courtesy begets courtesy. And because of her changed attitude, the duties which had once been a nightmare for her became instead the pleasant and exciting experience of meeting the public.